Section 8.5, dot product. Here's the definition of a dot product. Let's suppose we have vectors B and vector W. Give them my components A1, B1, A2, B2. To find a dot product, which looks like this, vector B dot vector W is, what do we do? We take the first components, multiply them, and add to that the second components, multiply it, okay? And what this produces is a scalar, so it produces basically like a number, okay, not a vector. All right, so let's see. Our first example we have is find v dot w if v is equal to 2 times the j vector and w is equal to 14 times the i vector, okay? And what they want me to find is v dot w, like this, v dot w, it's a dot product. All right, so vector v, how else could I write v? I could write it in component form a comma v, right? So that's zero i plus two j, so it looks like that. Vector w, another way to write that instead of in terms of the i vector is write it in terms of the components a and b. 14a is what a is, and 0 is what b is, right? For the last, what, one or two sections, we could say? All right, so v dot w will be what? Take your first components, multiply. 0 times 14, and add to that your second component's multiply, 2 times 0. Well, what does that give me? 0 plus 0, or just a number, 0. There's a dot product there. All right, notice it's a scalar. It's a number. It's not a vector. All right, so we have properties of dot products all written right here, okay? And you can go ahead and read through those and so forth, okay? I'm not going to bore you reading those in. A video here but we're about to use this one v dot v okay if you take the dot product of a vector with itself that's equal to the magnitude of that vector squared all right let's see where that comes into play go ahead and turn to page two in your notes page two in your notes all right on page two it says use a dot product to find the magnitude of the vector so they give me Vector w is equal to negative 18i plus 3j like this, okay? All right. So w, I can write in component form to be negative 18, comma, 3 if I wanted to, right? All right. Now, what do they say here? They say use a dot product to find the magnitude. What do I know? If I take the dot product of a vector with itself, then I have the magnitude what? Squared, right? So I can say the magnitude of W squared is gonna be equal to what? The dot product of W, right? With itself. All right, so could I say this could I say, but I want the magnitude of vector w, not its square. So I'll just basically take the square root of the dot products, or the dot product of the vector with itself. Okay, so what does this give me? This gives me the square root of w dot w. w dot w be negative 18 times itself, right? Take the first components. And add to that the second components multiplied. 3 times 3, right? In other words, it's like W's written there and W's written again. And I'm taking a dot product there, okay? All right, so let's see what we get here. Whenever I did this, I got like a square root of 3, 3, 3, I believe is what I got, okay? And then I broke that down and I said, that's the same thing as the square root of 9 times 37. So that's what? What's the square root of 9? 3 times the square root of 37 is the magnitude of vector w. All right.
right, let's look at the next example that we have. The next example, we have some vectors given to us, okay? And they're given to us in component form. They say the vector u is given by components negative 4, 1. Then they say the vector v is given by components 5, 2. And vector w is given as 0, 6, like this. Okay, so that's the first part. Then they say perform the given operation and tell if the result is a vector or scalar. And they want us to do this. Take u dot w and multiply that by vector v, okay? All right, let's see. Let's take u dot w and put that inside parentheses times the vector v, okay? What's u dot w? Well, u, let's dot it with w. So negative 4 times 0, negative 4 times 0, plus 1 times what? 1 times 6. So if I calculate the inside, what does that give me? 0 plus 6 is what? 6. And then I have what? Times vector v. What is vector v? Vector v is this vector that's given by components 5, negative 2. So now, how do you multiply a number, what we call a scalar, by a vector? We just basically distribute it in here, and that gives me 30 and negative 12. Okay, so what I do, I perform this operation like they told me to, but we still need to determine, is this a vector or a scalar? This will be a vector. This will be a vector. All right, what we have on page three now is the angle between two vectors. I know you're probably thinking, well, this is simple so far. Yeah, so far, kind of like everything else, right? We got to start simple, then we build, and that comes to a big old nasty problem and so forth. Things get chaotic. Kind of reminds you of a South Park episode, huh? How everything starts out calm, then very end, everything goes to hell. All right, so let's look at the angle between two vectors. Your book says this. It says, if theta is angle between two non-zero vectors, V and W, then we can say the cosine of theta is equal to, uh, they're using V and W, so it's V dot W over the magnitude of vector v times the magnitude of vector w is how I find the angle between those two, okay? And if you solve for theta, you'll take the inverse cosine, okay? So what are they talking about here? They're talking about, let's suppose you have a vector like right here, and we'll call that vector v, and then we have a vector right here, and we'll call that vector w. It's talking about that angle theta between them, how you find that. All right, well, let's use this. Our next example, our next example says, find the angle between V and W. If necessary, round to the nearest tenth of a degree. All right, so vector V is given by 12 times vector I minus 5 times vector J, and vector W is given by negative 3 times vector I minus 4 times vector J. Let me get this stuff out of the way now. Okay, what's it want me to do? Find the angle between V and W. Okay, so if I'm looking for the angle between these two, I'm going to say the cosine of theta is equal to vector U dot vector W, I'm sorry, but vector V dot vector W, over the magnitude of vector V times the magnitude of vector W. All right, so my cosine of theta is equal to, let's take u dot w. Why do I keep saying u? v dot w. Okay, vector v. In component form, I could write as 12, negative 5, right? Vector w. In component form, I could write as negative 3, comma, negative 4. 
All right, let's take the dot product. So that's 12 times negative 3 plus negative 5 times negative 4. Negative 5 times negative 4 all over the magnitude of vector v. What's the magnitude of it? The square root of 12 squared plus negative 5 squared times the magnitude of vector w. The magnitude of vector w would be negative 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. Now let's see, let's see cosine of theta is equal to negative 36 plus 20 all over, what is that, 144 and 25. So what does that give me? The square root of, is that 169 times the square root of nine uh, plus 16 is what, 25. And you could go ahead and simplify that more, but uh, you don't really need to, to be honest with you. You could just take the inverse cosine at this point if you wanted to. But I'll go ahead and simplify it, just less than put in the calculator that way. All right, what does that give you up top? Negative 16. Down below, what is that? Um, uh, 13 times 5. What's 13 times 5? 13 times 5 is what? Uh, 65? It's been a long day. All right, so let's calculate theta. So theta will be equal to the inverse or arc cosine of negative 16 over 65. So what does that give me? Theta is approximately, and they want me to round to the nearest tenth of a degree if necessary. I got 104.3 degrees. Let me make sure I'm still in view here. Yeah, sure am. All right, let's see. Now we have a bunch of stuff going on here. If the cosine of theta is equal to blah, 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 blah. Okay. Let me erase this and I can write in. All right, so we have if the cosine of theta is equal to v dot w over the magnitude of vector b times the magnitude of vector w. What I could do to get rid of this fraction is I could multiply both sides of this equation by these magnitudes right here, okay? Because those are just numbers, right? So I could say the magnitude of vector b times the magnitude of vector w times the cosine of theta is equal to vector b dot vector w, okay? All right, if the left side is equal to the right side, isn't the right side equal to the left side? So I could say vector v dotted with vector w is equal to the magnitude of vector v times the magnitude of vector w times the cosine of theta here. Okay, now let's see, what about the magnitude of vector v? Isn't it the length of the vector? So that's always going to be positive. The magnitude of vector w is the length of the vector, so it's always going to be positive. So if this stuff is always positive, the sign I'm going to get whenever I multiply this stuff by cosine is going to depend on the cosine, if that's positive or negative, okay? So whenever I dot V with W, the cosine is going to determine whether I get a negative, a positive, or a zero out of this, okay? So, let's do this. Okay, so if V dot it with W, or the dot product here, V with W, is less than zero. What does that mean, if it's less than zero? Uh, I'll tell you what, let me go in order of my notes here. Let me go ahead and put, if that's greater than zero is what I have it in the notes. 
If that is greater than zero, then what do I know? We said that this was always positive, right? Wouldn't I make cosine a positive as well? Because a positive times a positive will give me a positive. Then what do I know? I know the cosine of theta is also greater than zero or positive, right? What does that imply? Think about this for a second. What does that imply? If the cosine of theta is greater than zero, pick your angle theta. If the cosine is greater than zero, which quadrant would I be in? Quadrant one or quadrant two here? Well, my cosine's negative over here, right? So I'd be in quadrant one between zero and what? 90 degrees. So theta would be an angle between zero and 90 degrees, okay? Now, whenever we're talking about like, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the angle between two vectors, okay? And whenever we talk about the angle between two vectors, we're automatically talking about the smaller the two angles. Not this huge angle around this way, but the smaller, okay? All right, what if you take the dot product, V dot W, and you're less than zero? Then what could you say about the cosine of theta? If this is always positive, then this has to be negative, right, for that to work? So the cosine of theta is less than zero. In quadrant one or two, do you have the cosine less than zero? Well, in quadrant two, right? So that means theta must be an angle over here. Or I could say theta is an angle between 100, or let me write it this way, between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. But couldn't I put this as well? Because what is my cosine at 180 degrees? Isn't it negative one? Yeah, so I'm going to put equal to, right? Then I make the cosine less than zero. Now, what if the dot product is equal to zero? Then, what do I know about the cosine of theta? Well, these we said were always positive, right? A positive number times what will give you zero? Zero. So the cosine would equal to zero in this case, okay? What does that imply? If the cosine is equal to zero, where's the cosine equal to zero? Right here at what? 90 degrees, so theta would be equal to 90 degrees right here, okay? And then we have this statement that says two vectors, V and W are parallel if, parallel, if V is equal to C times vector W, okay? So two vectors are parallel, or two vectors in particular, V and W are parallel. If I can write V as some scalar times vector W. What does this mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. All right, let's suppose vector V is equal to, let's just come up with a real simple case, okay? It's equal to two comma, I don't know, eight, okay? And vector W is equal to six comma uh, 24, okay? Wouldn't vector V be equal to three or I'm sorry, not three times, one third times vector W. Think about it, if I take vector W, which is right here, and I multiply it by the scalar of one third, what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get two here, and I'm gonna get what? Eight there, right? So we'll get that. So what can I say about vector V and vector W here? They're what? Parallel. And why are they parallel? Because I could write it as what? A scalar times the other vector. All right.
Let's talk about orthogonal vectors. Orthogonal. What's it mean to be orthogonal? Basically perpendicular, okay? It means perpendicular. All right, so what does your book say here? Or look at your notes. What did I say? Two vectors, V and W, are orthogonal if and only if their dot product is equal to zero. So to check to see if two vectors are orthogonal, take the dot product. If it's equal to zero, orthogonal. If it's not equal to zero, they're not orthogonal. 